Welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. Uh, we got the news today that Twitter making it official. They uh, have announced they uh, are suing Elon Musk uh, over the failure to complete the merger agreement for the sale. Uh, Musk has since last week said he wanted to terminate that agreement. Uh, joining me now, uh, I'm being joined by legal expert Seth Berenswag to discuss all of this and so much more. Seth, thanks for being with us. Uh, I want to read in part from the complaint that Twitter filed today. It says, Elon Musk entered into a binding merger agreement with Twitter, promising to use his best efforts to get the deal done. Now, less than three months later, Musk refuses to honor his obligations to Twitter and its stockholders because the deal he signed no longer serves his personal interests. What do you make of that? Well, it's not surprising. This complaint landed in the Delaware Chancery Court today right on time, as expected. And I found the complaint to be very well written and very concise. Uh, it's, it's a one count, one claim complaint, which is simply a breach of contract. And it's asking for what's known as specific performance, which is to simply enforce the deal. That is exactly what the contract provides for, the contract at issue in the case. It's a simple purchase agreement. And in fact, it's a remarkably simple deal. In, in almost every kind of uh, transaction in, in the uh, corporate world, you have something called the so-called due diligence phase where the buyer can lift up the hood and go through a lot of extensive review and analysis. He waived that. He said, look, I'm going to buy this thing at uh, $54.20 a share. Uh, now it's closer to about $34.20 a share. And uh, he's decidedly unhappy. But as the complaint shows, he was very resistant and very petulant. I thought they did a very good job, frankly, showing a lot of the tweets and demonstrating that what uh, Musk allegedly did was pretextual. He's just trying to get out of a deal. He doesn't like the deal. He's coming up with a lot of allegations. But at the end of the day, I believe that this case will actually be fairly quick because the case at issue and the deal itself is relatively simple and straightforward. Seth, the irony in all of this is uh, at the outset when Musk, you know, announced his plans that he wanted to acquire Twitter, uh, you know, Twitter did not want to be acquired by Musk. And now you're seeing them now sue to complete the deal. Uh, and Musk is really taking this in stride, uh, almost joking about it. I want to put up this tweet. Uh, he tweeted, I believe, over the weekend. Uh, it's kind of a four-part there. Series of some of his smiling faces. One says, they said I couldn't buy Twitter. The next says, then they wouldn't disclose bot info. The next says, now they want to force me to buy Twitter in court. And the last one says, now they have to disclose bot info in court. So this is all really uh, hinged on the fact that Twitter, in Musk's words, was not being forthcoming about how many bots are on the platform. Musk saying there, joking about that, saying they're going to have to present that in court in discovery, presumably. Well, it will become an issue in discovery. It's, it's interesting that you show that tweet because that's actually in the complaint. There's a number of sarcastic tweets that were put out by Musk, and that's one of about a half a dozen of them. He also, at one point when he was responding to one of the bot-related position statements that was put out on Twitter by one of their executives, he actually literally put out a poop emoji. And <laughs> believe it or not, that's in the complaint too. So um, I think that the plaintiffs are feeling that the judge will not be amused. I think it's going to be a very difficult case for him. And it's very unusual in these cases, very unusual in these transactions to not have a right to actually get this information. It's a remarkably tight, concise deal, very limited conditions on closing. I think Musk has a serious uphill battle here. And at the end of the day, I think he'll either um, lose the case or he may be forced to have to uh, come in with a, an, an attractive offer to settle. But right now, I think this case will be a lot tighter and faster than most people anticipate. Yeah, Seth, just reading more in part from the complaint, uh, Twitter says rather than bear the cost of the market downturn as the merger agreement requires, Musk wants to shift it to Twitter's stockholders. You know, this is so interesting, too. This was so highly anticipated. Musk had all these ideas uh, of what he wanted to do with Twitter, how he wanted to change it, how he wanted to make it more of a open venue for free speech. Uh, and, and now Twitter is alleging he doesn't want it because uh, the stock price is much lower than when he initially said he wanted to buy. Well, what you say is interesting because if, if one of his primary goals was to make this a, a wonderful First Amendment free speech platform, then really the bots shouldn't have a heck of a lot to do with the decision to leave. 
And even if the 5% estimate is, is larger, the real issue in the case is whether it's going to have a materially adverse effect on the operations of the company. There's no way that I think he's going to be able to meet that standard. It's going to be a real uphill battle for Elon Musk. And I think he's going to find himself really in a bind. This is really something where the company has been really helplessly whipsawed. He said he was going to be on the board and then he didn't. And then he said he was going to do the deal. And then without the complaint says, without even any advance notice by tweet, he said the deal is on hold. It really just paints a very ugly picture of Musk. So he's going to have an uphill battle as this case proceeds in Delaware. Seth, just briefly, I want to get uh, a little political here because we heard Musk's name a lot over the weekend out of former President Trump's mouth uh, as, as uh, he was partaking in a campaign rally in Alaska. And there's been this back and forth about, you know, Musk said he supported Donald Trump uh, back in you know, 2016, 2020. Uh, and then now Musk came out with a tweet saying, you know, he needs to kind of ride off into the sunset and he's going to endorse and support uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis if he chooses to run for president. Uh, and then, of course, Donald Trump uh, over the weekend called him essentially a BS artist. And so you have politics and the dynamics there at play. How will this, do you think, factor into the litigation? Do you think it will come up? Well, you got to hand it to Elon Musk. He somehow finds a way to put his foot in, in every venue. He gets in. He gets into a dispute with Trump. He hosts Saturday Night Live. He's really one of the most fascinating characters. I think that the way that this may get blended into the litigation is to really demonstrate how mercurial and unpredictable Musk is. And here's a person who said that he was going to do a deal. At the end of the day, a, a transaction, no matter how complicated or uncomplicated, is just a contract, and a contract is a promise. So I think that these are circumstances where Twitter will try to lay the groundwork and say, this is a person who was really on a frolic and detour, and the, really the court should have very little sympathy for him. So it'll be fascinating to see what happens, but I do think this case will run pretty quickly. Remember, the shareholders vote for the approval of this was expected to occur by the end of the summer. So I really don't see this case going more than a couple of months. And certainly you can bet on the fact that Twitter is going to be pushing this case forward and really kicking it into fifth gear real soon. Yeah, of course, that was uh, another um, at least promise that Musk had considered of, of maybe bringing former President Trump back on to the social media platform after he got kicked off in the wake of January 6th. So lots of questions still. We'll be following this lawsuit there. Seth Berenswag, thanks so much for your insight. We'll talk to you again.